Evening. What's happening, everybody? Is everyone well tonight? Bit of a transfer update for everyone. Uh, we were going to do this tomorrow, but there's there's actually so much sort of kicking around before get it done today. And um, and let's have a chat about what's actually going on. Do I look dead red in that video or hot? Um, looks okay on this screen. On that screen, I look like my head's about to burst. Evening, everyone. Um, I will take some questions later because I know there's undoubtedly going to be some. See, yeah, United Way there. Have I been on the sunbed? No. I don't know if the coloured corrections off on this camera or whatever. But we will proceed. Um, I will take some questions if anyone's got any on um, what's going on with the fan ownership. But all I'll say is today went fucking brilliantly well. We are 500 members deep. That is absolutely sensational on day one. So, legends, um, we have just made sure that this football club is going to be kicking around and we're going to be doing absolute madness this season. So, legends, every single one of you. And I'll take some questions on that later and I'll probably dive into the Reddit group, Stratford Paddock FC Reddit group, and I'll be doing some um, answering some of the cues a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, dude, hell, hell of a suntan. I mean, I was in the sun this weekend, but nowhere near the level it looks like here right what are we talking about then united in for a triple swoop does that mean we're not getting anyone i mean but i think we'll sign players will it be these three players who are the three that we're talking about so let's talk about nkunku rob dawson espn has said that united are looking into looking into fc looking into the possibility of signing christopher nkunku okay I think he's low down on the priority list, in my opinion. Um, Sangar. Now, we did a, a bit of a, a scout report on him uh, about a week ago or so. Hell of a footballer. Definitely someone that I could see getting in the mix. Supposedly, United and Chelsea are interested in signing him. Um, has his heart set on a move to England. Uh, convinced he'll be a Premier League player next season, according to Sky. £35 million release clause. Not enough smoke in this one yet for me to think that there's anything going on here. And then finally, uh, De Jong, um, and there's there's like several updates on this. Jared Romero, who was saying um, 95% United player has come out and said Frankie De Jong is the only player at Barcelona whose locker room is completely empty. Apparently United don't want to be held to ransom by Barcelona over Frankie De Jong, and that's Simon Stone. That will be from someone at United, I guarantee it. Uh, and according to the Times, not a shabby organisation, United are exploring the possibility of signing Frankie De Jong, but it's understood they're not close to finalising anything ahead of the transfer window opening on Friday. Uh, as you see, it's loads of clubs are absolutely killing it at the moment and um, signing players left, right and centre. United are not one of those clubs, even though we've got a, an absolute desperate need. We've seen players leave. We are yet to see players come in. Out of those three... I would say it was the reverse order that I read them out. I would say Nkunku, I think, is probably unlikely to happen. Sengara, I, you know, I agree on that there. Possibility. His release clause is really good. He's an excellent footballer. He's in a position we need. I don't think he's our number one priority. Frankie de Jong, because of the existing relationship with him and Eric Ten Hag, because of his you know, absolute definite ability that he definitely possesses, um... I can see him being more of a priority based on all of the circumstances and especially with his relationship with Eric Ten Hag. So I do think that there's a chance with that. The fact that Simon Stone's come out and said United won't be held to ransom over Frankie De Jong. This is, this is um, transfer negotiation 101. This is now how you come out and you say, yeah, you know, Barcelona have been putting it out there how much they want to pay for him or they want someone to pay for him. And now United are putting it out through the press. This is how this dance is conducted. United putting it out through the press. Well, listen, yeah, you're interested in the guy. Not going to be held to ransom over him, though. This is the, the, the nature of the bullshit business that we're in. That, I would say, Simon Stone there, is the first inkling of any sort of transfer genuine news that we've had this window. Everything else, I think, has been opposition or... Um, Opposition led or player agent on that side led. That I would say, in my opinion, doing this long enough now to sniff out the old bullshit rustled in there amongst the truth, I would say that is the first time we have seen a genuine briefing from United on a transfer um this this window, I would say. Um Simon Andrew there says, evening everyone in the comments. Um 
Chombella says losing out to Liverpool on Darwin Nunes. Darwin Nunes video is coming tomorrow, so look out for that one. Um, we will do that one. There's a lot of comments in there talking about him. Um, there's... Uh, Rossiton says, hey, signed up to Paddock. Best of luck with it all. Uh, Anthony says, happy that Nunes is going to Liverpool, meaning we're not going to be held to ransom by another club. Uh, Rebecca says, uh, Luis Rojo on Twitter says, we've made a bid for who is that one? I haven't seen that one. Um, let's, um, one second. Um, getting a, a look on some of these here. What's going on? Can't, hang on, loading it. Uh, um, I can't see the Luis Rojo one anywhere. Oh, there we go. Luis Rojo United have offered 60 million fix plus 20 million in variables for Frankie de Jong. There we go. I don't know who he is. I don't know if he's legit or not. Um, he isn't verified. There's a guy with 4,000 followers. Not a clue who that guy is. Someone's for Radio Marker. Let's see if there's anything in that one. Um, we need a midfield and a defender more. Um, one second. And I'm back. Um, Evans, uh, Ewan, sorry, says, I kind of worried it seems that like United are making centre-back a lower priority. They might be. There's some talk about Pau Torres. Um, there's some talk about Timber. Um, obviously there's other centre backs in the mixer as well you know um, I, I don't know if it's a lower priority or if it's just that we are a bit full steam ahead on um, Frankie de Jong uh, thoughts on Bastoni I think we're covering Bastoni tomorrow morning as well I'm not sure what time we're going live I would think it'd be 11 or 12 um, tomorrow so check those out um, Creative Cut reckons Nunes to Liverpool is 100% agent talk could be we'll, we'll cover that one tomorrow uh, Bale and Eriksson for squad players. That's a lot of money in squad players, isn't it? Um, Gareth says, on the wine. Red, of course. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Uh, uh, Pascal says, I would prefer Koulibaly or Botman if possible. Listen, this is the game, isn't it? United are so bad at the moment that you can literally almost go anywhere and improve us. Like, you can go and get relegated players and they start for us. United are uh, well uh, well improvable. Uh, comment I didn't catch the name says, um, can United work on multiple targets at the same time? No evidence of that, I would say. Um, any news on the outs? Nothing in terms of the outs at the moment. Like I said, it's, there's not, not a lot in terms of on the underground or, or briefings happening from anyone inside the club at the moment. Hence why what I can see there from Simon Stone, I genuinely believe that is the first one of the summer that I certainly that, that I've seen where I go, there you go. Someone's been told something there. Simon Stone's very reliable and very well connected inside the club. So I think that that's one that I think um, has definitely come from somebody in the club and, and what they're saying I can absolutely imagine a club saying that one as well. So, you know, I think that's that's probably about as legit as it's going to get. Um, Paul says, any chance of Bernard getting a chance or is he gone? Don't know. I don't know about any of those. Any of the lads that have been out on loan, I think they've all got a little bit of an opportunity. I think they'll all get... There's so many players gone. I think you have to give those lads an opportunity in pre-season. Um, do I think we will bottle the transfer window i mean let's be honest it's it's possible isn't it i don't think so though no i think i think we'll sign some players ultimately i think um i think we'll sign some players whether or not we're capable of signing all of the players that we need i don't know about that one um manchester maverick says ola from menorca hopefully frankie isn't the only major name i don't care if he i don't care if we don't sign any major names if we sign the 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 player that we want then i'm happy with that i don't care about the the size of the name yeah the names get you excited and stuff like that and frankie's a, a, a good name because he's a good player but it's less about the name and more about did the manager get what he wants and is he genuinely happy going into the season look i guarantee this right eric ten Hag is definitely going to say he's happy with the window even if he's fucking fuming that's the game he's not going to come out and be like yeah they fucking shagged me absolutely shagged me I wanted all these players. They told me back in April I could have all these players and look what I've got. 
I've got an half-eaten fucking Twix and a flat can of lilt. Bastards. He's not going to come out and say that. You know, he, he's, he's always going to um, say he's happy with the window because then that gives the players confidence going into the window that, yo, yeah, we were the ones that he wanted. You can't fucking say otherwise. It's carnage. Um, super chat there that I just missed from David. Says, stay big fan. Have zero calorie pint or three. <laughs> Thank you very much. Help me out. I want to know how Ten Hag um, wants to play Bruno, Frankie de Jong and Donny van der Beek together. Or is that not a three that com is compatible Personally, no, I don't think it would be a free that's compatible. I think Donny would probably be back up Bruno and back up Frankie. And I think you probably have a more serious number six um, alongside either of them. You've got to remember a squad game at the end of the day. Um, and everyone will get minutes, especially with Europa League football. So it's not a, a massive drama. Look how thin we were when you have a couple of injuries this year. Having a little bit of depth in an area is not a bad thing. And if, if uh, Fred McTominay and Donny van der Beek was your second three in midfield... I'm taking that, to be honest. If you had um, Frankie, Bruno, and A, another, like a Kante, perhaps, or somebody like that, I'd, I'd go with that. Abinav Verma says, if an outfield player um, on the goal line passes to the keeper and the keeper catches it, is it a back pass, even if the keeper is ahead of the player? I think it is, yeah, because I think it's less about the direction of travel from the ball and the fact that it's gone to the keeper. I think it's the keeper collecting the pass. Maybe the name of the rule needs changing, but yeah, it, interesting question that I actually don't know the answer to. Honey Badger, Steve, if we don't get a striker, uh, do we move Marcus back through the middle uh, and have him or Ronnie lead the line? I don't know if moving Marcus constantly like this is going to be good for his development, but I also don't necessarily think he's, he's going to be starting straight off the bat on the left wing. Massive, massive, massive summer for him, I think. Massive. Uh, Ross Murphy, I ain't seen you for a bit. Where have you been? Uh, I think we signed about four players. Uh, I like to see them get a preseason under them. Also, any news on Timber? That's gone quiet recently. There's no news on on all of those. This is why it's been a bit a bit a bit of a quiet week really on a transfer front. Um, I actually think things are going to start hotting up now, and it's got jack shit to do with the window being open on Friday. It's not like United have been sitting on all these transfers, and then Friday twelve o'clock they're going to be like, right, here's all the transfers we've done. See you next week. That's not going to fucking happen. Um, I'd be surprised if we have one completed by next week. In all honesty, but it'd be nice to start seeing you know, the the realism start start moving with it. I mean, this year, this this week, you've had. I mean, what a waste of time internationals was this week. Did anyone give a toss about the internationals playing this week? What a waste of fucking time all of those ones were. Pathetic. Um. Absolutely pathetic. Waste of everyone's time. So the fact that his international has been going on probably delayed things moving a little bit, I would imagine. Uh, Rebecca says, is it a good or bad thing? We haven't heard anything this week. Um, or was Woodward one telling about the press about our links? Personally, I think he was, but I don't have any evidence for that. I just a gut feeling. Um, the way the business has been conducted previously and the way it's been conducted now, it could also have been Marcel Boo and Jim Lawler, but I'm not sure it was. Um, I think it's a good thing. It's frustrating. Obviously, when you're trying to make content about United News, pretty frustrating if there's no fucking news. Um, but I think there's um, I think there's something in the mixer. Um, Gareth says Wales versus Ukraine World Cup qualifier. Okay, apart from the actual World Cup qualifiers, they're valid. I'm talking about the fucking friendlies England have been playing. What a fucking waste of everyone's time. And there's there's not just England been playing friendlies as well. There's a lot of friendlies been happening um, in the last couple of weeks. Waste of fucking time. Uh, Honey Badger says, not liking the De Jong saga. Saga? It's been about three weeks, on it? You know. <laughs> Jaden Sancho was about two and a half years. Um... Johnny says, would I keep Ahmad or Palestri this season or loan them out? Which has the higher ceiling? From what I've seen, Ahmad, but if you're not getting in the Rangers team, I think you're going to struggle to get into the United team. Um, I would probably loan them out. A, a bit of a mad one, to be honest. Signing two players for the same position that are both potential. Who the fuck sanctioned that? That just shows you how poorly the clubs run at the moment. We probably spent somewhere in the region of 40, 50 million on them. Maybe call it more like 80 million when you throw Donny van der Beek into the mix and none of them are designed to be first team players, yet there was massive holes in the first team. Shows you just fucking run like absolute muppets. Um, 
BMW Racing says nations are pish uh, and cause injuries after a rough season. Yeah, th think about this, right? All of the players who just played in the Champions League final or, or, or whatever, you now go, that's the end of the season. Or even if you just watched it, that's the end of the season. Okay, let's call it a day now. End of the season's done. Jobs are good. Un. And then, oh, actually, no, can you report for England duty on Tuesday? What? Jack Grealish has been off his fucking nut for 10 days. Like, he must have he must have rocked up for England training and pissed straight lager. Like, <laughs> what sort of Sunday League shit is this, man? Nightmare. Ian McDonald says, well, if Dion comes, we'll be captain. Not a fan of giving new signings the captaincy, to be honest with you. Think it should be on seniority. Ian says, would I consider becoming the club's the club sporting director, we need a level head in there. To be honest, mate, I get enough shit. So no, I think I'd fucking pass. I'd say cheers, but the fact that you're asking a fucking guy off YouTube that manages a level 13 team shows the fucking problems we're in. Surely someone better for the job than me. Um, Zachary Purvis says, um, all the news has stopped since Ralph left. Um, the USA friendlies were great. Uh, gave them a chance to see who to take to the World Cup. Rennie's book is mint. Thanks for recommending it. Also, congrats on the weight loss. Thank you. Uh, we've got a lot of comments for that. Don't see me standing up very much, do you? Uh, <laughs> um, got a lot of comments for that on the paddock video, because I don't stand up a lot. Transfer reviews back this week, so I'll be standing outside, probably in the rain if the weather's going off anything today, I think. Um, the United Way says, bold statement, if United didn't uh, have Woodward involved in the club, uh, Van Gaal, Jose and Ollie would have all won the Premier League. I don't necessarily think you can say that, but okay. Um, Bob says it'd be funny if the Dippers paid 90 for Nunes and he ended up the Uruguayan Andy Carroll. Chibo says, Talks United interested in preparing to send scouts to monitor Star in hopes of beginning to discuss bidding imminently becoming closer. It's, it's a fucking nightmare, isn't it? Um, you should, uh, Abinav says, you should actually name the transfer review as the we ain't saying it, signing anyone review. I mean, that's what I do though, isn't it? Just get fucking zeroed out of 10 to death. It's good fun at the end of the day. Uh, Alex says, transfer review should be called a 0 out of 10 club because we're not fucking signing anyone. Um, what would I class as a successful window? Like five first-team players. Not first-team player in three years. Not first-team player in four years. First-team players. Um, Talking Muse says, do I agree Nkunku would be uh, the most value for money? No, I don't agree Nkunku would be the most value for money. Um, is there anyone I would take instead of Young? Yeah, loads. I mean, the fact that, I mean, I haven't seen anything in, in a while on it, so I'm not ex exactly Mr. Um, up to speed on what's going on with Arsenal transfers, but the fact that they were in for Thielman and we never even considered it, like, he was available for next to nothing in the grand scheme of things. Great age profile, fantastic Premier League proven player. Got years left in him. Can you give me a reason to not sign him? Guy's out fucking rageous. Um, yeah, Neves. Neves is another shout. Um, Hank says, little early to start saying we're not signing anyone, isn't it? I'm holding out to at least the start of July. No, we will sign someone, but the transfer review... We will be linked to somewhere in the region of 200 to 250 players. Pretty safe bet to say this is a load of bollocks with pretty much everyone that I read out. Um, Pain and Poverty says Ahmad played very well when he played for Rangers. Uh, scored or assisted pretty much every game. Wasn't getting picked because of the seniority in the squad. All Rangers fans have said good things when he left. Was it a goal a game? I'm, I'm going to take your word for that, but I am going to also Google it. Because I'm not sure it was a goal again. I mean, it was one goal in two starts, three off the bench in the Premiership and one off the bench, two starts in the Scottish Cup where he didn't score. Not quite a goal a game. I mean, I've got an average rating of 6.35 on who scored, which you know, I don't know the full metrics of how that works, but you know, I don't know the metrics of all how that works. So just call it that. Um, 
lots of questions. Um, do I think a hundred million for Nava Nunes is too much? Yes. Um, Juan Martinez says, "Got my green and gold paddock kit and my paddock FC membership today. Fantastic! Hoping to fly from Vancouver to catch a match this season. Superb." Um, so yeah, I touched on it earlier. Uh, we got five hundred members um for the club today the official launch went well um, i've had a couple of people question why we've not done shares the problem with shares is <laughs> i actually can't believe a united fans asking why we wouldn't do shares the reason we're stuck with the glazers is because it was shares we got put on a um uh, we got a public lim limited company we got publicly traded and then the glazers bought all the shares and then lumbered the club in debt like considering the considering the history of the club I, I can't believe anyone would suggest that would be a anything that you would do um no fan ownership means fan ownership um not looking for anyone to make a profit out of the club that's literally what the glazers did we want people to become part of the community if you don't want to be part of the community that's fine you know you don't have to be and you don't have to join as a member the fact that so many people are willing to do so and willing to be part of a community that does this is fucking sensational. Um, and, I th and I think we'll get more. I think we can get 1,000. Um, 500 in one day is absolutely incredible. And I think we get more when it, you know, there's an affordability option once the app comes out, which will be um, a matter of weeks, I believe. And that gives you the option of doing it at £5 a month. And I think more people will go it then. Yeah. So I think having... I think having shareholders who are motivated motivated by dividends and you know the potential for one person to just buy all the shares and fuck everyone off isn't something I want. I, I would rather have um, a community where me as the founder, my one vote matters as much as that guy's and that guy's and that guy's and that guy's. And, and that's what I want to do. I want to create a community. And yes, we will build roots in, in the, the Trafford area, and in Manchester, but it was also important for us to to represent the people that have supported this thing and and made it um, real from from the get go, and that's our worldwide audience. Um, if you're not on the Reddit group, the Reddit groups kicked off like mad today in terms of um, people literally across the world being represented, and I love that, and I hope you guys club together and say, yeah, I'm from San Diego. There's seven other guys here from San Diego. We are now the San Diego Supports Club. Fucking sensational. Um, and you know, there's a ton in Ireland, and there's a there's a ton in uh, Scandinavia, and, and there's a, some people in Spain, which I was surprised at. And you know, they're literally all over the world. And, and there's a few reasons. A couple of people have questioned, what if the club gets to the Premier League? Who's going to have those profits? For starters, lads, I, I love the ambition. We're not fucking getting to the Premier League, right? If we end up in the middle of non-league, it's an absolute massive success. What we want to do is build a, a place that people can come and play football and join in as a community. Um, that's it. If you're motivated by shares i'll be honest with you I, it wouldn't i don't think it was feasible for a non-league club to have shares anyway i don't think you do make money if that was the goal for it but the goal for it to be an egalitarian democracy where we can set the values and standards and be involved in something the way that we're not with the premier league teams that's it that's it um that's the um the top and bottom of it European Super League was a massive motivator for me personally. That's when I put the statement out last year and I said, I'm going to do this and I don't know how I'm going to do it just yet, but I'll do it and I've done it. And there's there's more stuff in the pipeline. And those who are members, I'll be letting you guys know as soon as it makes sense to let you guys know. Because um, obviously there's still things that are going to be confidential that we're working on that we have to uh, delay the release of. But everything that we're working on, we will we will obviously be putting to you guys to, to vote on, but I have to go around collecting information confidentially about certain things. Um, the big picture is where we're going to play in the future. We have a home for the moment. It's not our home though. It's, it's rented, it's rented accommodation. Um, we ultimately need our own place. And that's the long, long-term thing. 
um and it, it might be because of our massive membership base that we're able to um to get funding and grants and things that to make it a reality that we have our own home um yeah the app the app will be a matter of weeks that'll give another option uh, for people to come in um the 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 option to become um a member and the the membership model is is very much the barcelona membership model um they they call them socios which is getting a little bit confused because i think there's like an nft related thing with socios and that's probably muddy in the waters a little bit but the socios are basically the members that own um barcelona and then things like the you you'd probably heard about the presidential elections and stuff like that is um you know these are things that we will um be doing in due course as well everything will be up um for election uh, after a, a, a set period of a couple of years and everything will be able to be voted on and i mean everything there's things i've held back on making decisions on because i'd like to know what the fan base wants us to do and i touched on some of those this morning gambling sponsorships alcohol sponsorships women's teams junior teams these are all things i want to have uh, brian casey says how many members do we have so far let's click on the sheet we are at, it's gone up since I went live, 560. So we've got 560 members have joined in the last, well, there was a few that are from Patreon, but basically we, we're up 500 today. Um, Kevin Barton says, how do I join? If you go and hit my Twitter from today, probably one or, tweets that, one or two tweets down is the video. Um, and you'll get, you'll get the link on there. Or if you just search Stretford Paddock Fan Ownership, it'll appear there. Um, there's a couple of people that have asked for their numbers and there's, there's a lot of other people hit the um, support chat as well. We will get to you in, in the next 48 hours for everyone that's asked those questions. If you want to know what your number is, I read some out. I'm not going to read everyone's number out because there's nearly 600 of you. Um, but we will um, we will be able to give you... Oh, Someone's just put flat one one four six if you're watching right now and you've just put flat one four six nine acre court that's what your certificate's gonna say so please fill in your name with what you want on the certificate um i, I imagine you don't want flat one four six <laughs> so um yeah people that are asking their number um people that are asking for their number um you will get your number when your certificate comes. We are we haven't ordered the certificates yet. We're going to probably order the certificates probably monthly uh, to make it make sense rather than doing it weekly. We will um, probably order them monthly, so we're probably going to order them um, in about two or three weeks. And then once they come to us, we'll post them out to you guys as well. Um, Rebecca says, how's the family? Family's good um little dan says paid for mine today congratulations welcome to the club um and he says and people laughed at me for putting my email address in that box <laughs> um someone commented saying i'm from nigeria i can't join is there a problem i know someone mentioned there was a problem with the subscription in in india uh, i'm going to look into that as well um uh, we do have a certificate supplier yes um if for so for those that are from uh nigeria is that a similar problem if so we will look into it and we can hopefully create a link for you guys as well that works there as well um uh, how long will the membership ownership be available says jonathan it probably be available for any but to get in as a founder member so our founder members will be um enshrined in our forever home everyone that joins before new year's eve will be classed as a founder member because this is our f year that we've launched this project so if you join before new year's eve you'll be classed as a founder member after that it will probably go to um a membership um everyone who becomes a founder member will forever be known as a founder member um South Africa is also a problem, says George. Okay, I will look into that. So if if anyone's got any of those problems, either hit, hit us up on um, on the support email or if you can 
post it in the Stratford Paddock FC Reddit because there might be more people that are having a similar problem as well. So go and check it out on there, and um, and I'll, I'll I'm going to go comment on there in a, in a second anyway. I'm going to start answering some of the questions that people have got because there are some on there. Um, is Naked HD a founder member? I don't know who Naked HD is. Please hire Chucky as assistant manager. I would love to hire Chucky as an assistant manager. Dave says, evening, Steve. I like the Sangal link up. However, seems to be wishing up uh, these days. Hopefully we get a move on. I think we're going to see some movement, yeah. Uh, T Doom says, Tromso, north of Norway here. Uh, we'll join on Friday when I get a paycheck. Sensational. I think there's going to be a few people doing that as well. Where do I see Paddock in uh, five years? We might be signing a United player this summer. FYI. Um, where do I see us in five years? I would hope that we're in the Northwest Counties and we're we're about to embark on our first FA Cup run or maybe even our second FA Cup run because that'd be possible. Um, but I would hope that that's where we're at. And that's where I'll probably be calling it a day as manager. Had a good success rate this year, won 75% of our games. But I think at some point um, we will probably be um, me being the thing that holds us back. I'm aware of my limitations as a coach. I don't think I'm amazing. So I'll be... Um, I'll be moving aside for someone more qualified or who wants to do this full time as a career. Um, Kefil says, which sources have stated finally submitted a bid? There was quite a few, to be honest, on Frankie de Jong. So it looks like there could be something on there. Simon Stone's tweets, the one that's interesting to me, which is um, United have been said they're not going to be held to ransom. That to me sounds like the first bit of truth that we've seen in this window. Um, What's happening with the mystery guest on five? Is he coming on? Um, yeah, I believe so. I think we've just took a break for the summer anyway. So I'm sure he'll be back on in the new season. Honestly, you fuckers are going to have your balls blown off with who we've got as guests. I can't be any stronger than that. Like, anyone that you can think of, hey, I wonder if they're going to get him on a podcast. Yeah, we are. Like, there's, there's six booked in for the first part of the season. And I've just... My reaction was, fuck off, really? Can't wait. Um, 64 Ahmed says, see, this is a very pertinent point, and I'm, I did mention this this morning. I'm a student, can't afford 50 quid to join. Um, if I want to join in the future, uh, will that be a thing, or is it now or never? No, it's going to be a, this will be a, a thing that we run forever of the, the moving of a club, but we're also probably going to introduce a student price. These are things that I've wanted us to introduce um but again i wanted to vote on our members we're a de democratic club i can make these decisions i don't want to make these decisions i want to include our owners our joint owners in the decision making for this sort of stuff so that will be something going out to vote probably this month about bringing on um bringing on a um what's it called a concessionary pricing structure um my questions have just disappeared. Let me just get them back up. Um, Chris McVeigh says, you need to get Vinny Jones on Vibe with Five. I'm not sure if he's the sort of profile of our audience, in all honesty. Um, Blue Unit in 1886 says, if Paddock were in the FA Cup and draw United, who would I support? We will not ever get to the third round. I don't think. Getting to the first round from our level means winning more games than it would for United to win the thing. Um, Ronnie Barker says, Steve has someone decent, got that tint in his eye when asked about it. <laughs> you have no... I can't be strong enough. The fucking players we've got coming on will blow your fucking balls off. Honestly, like, my reaction was, holy shit, that's insane. Um, and the reason my reaction was, holy shit, that's insane, well, holy shit, that's fucking insane. Um, <laughs> Moyes has Kinchelskis. <laughs> um... 
Stephen says, can we have a clue who the United player might be for Paddock? There might be more than one. There might be more than one. Um, there might be more than one player that's um, played for United that's um, coming on. And it's not William Prunier. I'm sorry to disappoint everybody. It's not William Prunier. Uh, Blake's just shouting me, telling me that Diesel's barking. Okay, thank you. Um... I'm not going to get anyone in shit by reading some of these names out, but um, some people are on the right track. Uh, Nunez in worth it says Ninirium, Nimirium. Uh, that first touch of not being able to hold the ball up properly, 80 million for that, Liverpool can have him. I think this could, again, still be agents talk. Like, oh, United haven't bit hard enough. Let's get Liverpool involved so they shit it and come in. Um, Jed says, if I become an owner, does that mean I can take millions out in dividends when you reach the Prem? <laughs> no, mate. Um... Ed T says it felt like the West Ham show this season. Um, Probably Rio making up for all the rice in T United chat. Yeah, I feel a bit nervous sometimes. Cause I, like when he posts, obviously I'm tagged in it. Um, when he posts the podcast and the fucking West Ham fans give him some absolute pelters. I can't go on Twitter when we posted it. It's just fucking bonkers. Um, but I don't think he does it on purpose. It's just one of them, isn't it? Uh... Andy says, same as always, clubs doing moves, United doing fuck all but links and looking. Uh, Pain and Poverty says, Nunez is a Uruguayan Lukaku. Um, MZI says, uh, I like the silence coming from a club so far under Ten Hag's tenure. Builds good anticipation. Yeah, I mean, it could go off like a fucking rocket. They announce um, Frankie de Jong and it's fucking party time, isn't it? Um, and there we want. That's the one we want. Um, Phil Jones is not going to be... Um, Signing for Paddock. Sorry, everybody. Talking with H says, did I know Sir Alex stopped Steve Bruce uh, from representing Ireland at the 94 World Cup because it messed up his UK quote for the Champions League? No, I did not know that. That's crazy. Um, Daniel Paget says, Michael Owen, just so Steve can rinse him for chatting absolute wibble. <laughs> um, do I think Rio still has a season in him? fucking hell trust me kid. i i don't gen believe right i fucking i was gonna say i grew up watching real i didn't really i was already a man when he signed for us but i fucking followed his entire career obviously at united it's mad enough that i do a podcast with him if i ever saw him sitting there like drinking a bottle of water on the bench or in the dressing room as i'm giving a team talk i think i would burst out laughing even if it was for a pre-season friendly I'd just be like, why am I fucking sitting here talking? Fuck off. <laughs> like, uh, I, I no, I don't think he's got a season in him. I actually think his back's in fucking absolute shit state. Um, I think he's in agony with it. Alex says, uh, for a new number nine, I would rather have Jonathan David, uh, but he's going by an you know, Ajax um, or Isak from Sociedad. There's players out there. That's what I mean. That like, don't panic. There's there's so many options out there. The problem is, are United aware of them, and are they gonna um, box it off? Anthony Jarvis says, Channel Four panel for the England game was awful. Owen and Joe Cole. Um, what did I think of Roy Carroll? He was mad as fuck, wasn't he? He was all right though. I mean, he, he clearly wasn't Van der Sar, but he was all right. Um. Tony Marshall next season. I'd be surprised if Tony Marshall stays around, in all honesty. JR says, Gary Pallister, underrated legend, gets nowhere near enough respect. Gary Pallister shits all over a lot of the people, like people like John Terry, and people think I'm joking. He Absolutely not. Go and fucking watch him. Piss take that he didn't get any, anywhere near the respect that he gets. I think Fergie has him above Rio in terms of how good he was. You know what I mean? Um, Peter Carroll says if United get the young should be uh, a marker of intent and other players shouldn't be as hard to tempt as a result that's real that might be a, a reason of why they're they're trying to force him through first 
Uh, also, if he's going to be um, the big money signing, then you you kind of need to have the big money signing over the line, don't you? So then you can figure out um, what you're going to do with the rest of them. You know, are you going to bring in this guy? Are you going to bring in that guy? Or have you just wasted your whole budget? And you can't really start negotiating on the others if your big one hasn't um, been decided yet. So it makes sense in a way to go with figuring out what's happening with De Jong first. How many countries have the new members come from? Right, well, I won't read out addresses because that's probably breaking some sort of data protection, but here's what it says. Uh, GB, GB, US, US, um, US, GB, Australia, GB, GB, US, GB, GB, US, GB, where the fuck is that? A, B, C, A. Okay, I think someone's fucked up. Oh, no, that's Canada, isn't it? Alberta, Canada. Sorry, my bad. Um, US, US, GB, US, US, Canada, US, SE, Sweden, GB, GB, US, US, GB, GB, uh, London, Lincolnshire, uh, Oregon, Stoke, Retford, Dayton, Ohio, HU, where is that? Is that Hungary? I can't even pronounce what that city is. That's getting lost in the post, mate. Norway. Um, Johor. MY. Malaysia. Um, Ilkston. Ireland. Uh, Germany. Berlin. Oslo. New Jersey. Uh, Dana Point, California. London. Uh, Sutton Coalfield, London. West Midlands. That's very fucking vague. Manchester, London, Marysville, WA, where's that? Don't know what state that is. Washington, WA, is that Washington? Uh, Basildon, Lincoln, Brunswick, Linwood, Rochdale. Sorry to break it. I'm not going to read your postcode out, but someone's put... I might have to email this person. Someone's put 7 Rochdale. <laughs> I'm sorry. Being a postman must be a fucking nightmare at times. 7 Rochdale. <laughs> fucking good luck getting that in. Sorry. Um... WA. No, I don't think Western Australia. It's, it was definitely America. Apparently that's not plugged in. That's a nightmare, isn't it? Apologies. This shit was going to die plugged in there now um has the pedant membership gone live yet that's what i was just reading out mate okay for some reason this shit ain't charging what's going down here we might have to call this a day in a sec um honey badger says austria haven't looked bad under ralph Amazing when players that players actually listen to a coach. Madness. Um Anthony says, My thoughts are we'll sign five players and we'll give three or five youth players in the squad. Which three would it be? Jimmy Garner's front of the queue. I think Levitt and Galbraith might have to fight out with each other. Possibly the same with Mengi and Bernard. I think Brandon Williams really gets a shout. Um, Mario says Chicken Falls, Norway. Uh, uh, Salford in the comments. I think people are just writing stuff. Um, Laird could do, yeah. 
when Paddock make the EFL, what song will they walk out to? Well, right now, I I haven't walked out to Morning Glory by Oasis. And that's just me being a pure dictator with that. Because it's a fucking tune I absolutely love coming out to. Um, I am looking for... Um, I am looking for a bit more on that, but um, if if there's anyone got any suggestions, bang it in the Reddit group. See what everyone says. Let's, you know, this is what the community is all about. Um, Mike says I've seen it in a few live streams. What does a poster mean behind you? This one, Memento Mori it means remember that you're dead. I remember that you're gonna die. Is it? It's a flag. It means stop taking shit too serious because you're fucking worm food very soon. We're all dead. We were dead for billions of years. You're alive for a couple of decades, handful of decades, and then you're fucking dead again. Um, and then this one is a night vision photograph from Afghanistan. I'm the second one in. Um, Broken Star says any plans to get games recorded and uploaded to YouTube are you taking a fucking piss <laughs> is this a serious point <laughs> okay if you're not aware Stratford Paddock FC has its own YouTube channel where all of the games that we've ever played are posted if that was a serious comment if it wasn't fuck you um Did I ask Neville for a match against Salford? No, they'd fucking lever us. <laughs> um, unless you meant live streaming. Um, live streaming is um, a complicated issue. Um, it takes um, a lot in terms of manpower to be able to do um, to do that sort of stuff. Even a reserve side would love us. Macclesfield and Northern Premier, right? We played Macclesfield reserves just after Christmas and they put fucking seven past us. So Salford, who are League Two, their reserves, a little bit tasty, fellas. I'm going to be real with you. A little bit tasty. Um, Frio Owen says, go full old school, dance on a volcano, Genesis. Honestly, I've never even heard that song. I couldn't identify that song if you put a gun to my head. Live streaming, if it becomes a possibility, will be another reason to become a member because that will be in the app first um, and maybe exclusively. Um, I forgot Ganacho. No, I didn't. I didn't forget Ganacho. I think Ganacho will be very much a peripheral player, if not on loan. I don't think he'll feature more than a handful of games. Um, I think he's got a hell of a potential, but it needs to be um, boxed off and managed to bring him into the team. Um, what time are we on? Janine says, um, the aim is to get the certificates printed with your membership number, so please don't email Freshdesk asking for your number. Uh, you'll get it in the post. Yeah, that's a good point. If you put something mad, like Seven Rochdale or Flat146 is your name, we're probably going to email you and ask you what do you want printing on your certificate because that's what if you're joining up that's what we want you to to put on the certificate is whatever you want as your um certificate name so notch put notch and i emailed i messaged him said like do you really want notch or do you want your name on there and he was like no i want notch All right fine um Akshay says Ganacho contract expires 2023. Uh, might get another Pogba problem if we don't give him game time. I think you'll he'll, he'll sign on again, I think. Um, Colin says Wales have only got 2,000 tickets for each of their World Cup games. Oh, this fucking World Cup, man. Um, Jed says, so the player's going to stop paying subs. Yeah, the, so this is a bit of a recruitment tool for, for Paddock. Uh, me and Ronaldo discussed it this morning a little bit. Um, when you're bringing in ex academy players, um, to a man, I'm trying to think of anyone been a dick. I don't think they have. To a man, they've been mint. Um, I think Akira's had a bit of a reputation of an attitude, but not from me. 
Um, I I really like Akira's attitude. I like how hard he works, and he still comes down and um, he still comes down and trains with us on a regular basis and puts the levels through the roof in training. And he's a great example for us to use to other players at the club. He went to the conference, he went and played for Chester, and he's done really well playing for Chester. And Akira's had um, Akira's had a brilliant impact for me at Paddock. But I think there's some coaches have probably let him go because he does have a resting, can't be asked look to his face. A little bit like Tony Marshall does. And I think coaches have judged him a little bit on the back of that. My experience with dealing with him is he's always been very polite. If he wants to come to training, he texts me and says, do you mind if I come to training? Not being a player, I like that politeness. Um, the point I was making about academy players is some some people who've been paid, whether it was an academy or a scholarship or whatever it is, when some people have been paid to play football, joining a club all the way down the leagues that is um, paying subs is an absolute mental block for some of them. They just go, I can't do it. Even if they like the club, even if they like what we stand for, they just can't get over that little fact. So being able to eliminate the subs, um, the players are still paying a registration fee and that's their membership to the club. That's their buy-in to the club. And for that, for that they get their training kit and stuff. But for, um, for us to be able to eliminate the subs, it's a great recruitment tool for us to help more players get back in the mix. Um, and also, it puts us on a little bit of a level footing. The league that we're going into, I would assume over 90% don't pay subs at this level because they're quite well-established clubs with clubhouses and this, that, and the other. And there is a small percentage that will pay win bonuses, and at the very, very top end, some will be paying their players. So for us to have joined this league where some people are getting paid, it doesn't have us on a level footing. So I don't ever want to be seen as doing it Real Madrid style or even how Salford did it in terms of just buying your way up through the leagues. We will not have a big budget in any league, in my opinion. I don't think we need to because we recruit well. And you know, talking to Spencer about this, I, I'm not even sure if they pay. Um, I know up until very recently, if they do pay, I know that that's a very recent thing. But because of the the sheer number of people who want to play for the club, they don't have the requirement where they need to because recruitment is easy for them. So I um I would like to follow that thing. I want to give people an opportunity and I want to move them on. You know, that's what we're looking to do. Um, Andy says, could Paddock end up playing Spencer's hashtag? Um, we've got a date penciled in for summer. Um, I'm, I'm not going to give you the date just yet, um, but it's very soon. Um, the the holdup is I can't find an affordable coach to take us there. Obviously, we're going to play at their place. It's in Essex. It's a fucking long drive from Manchester. So um, I've just got to find an affordable coach company that can take us there because the ones that I'm looking at the moment take the fucking piss. Um, Hugh Hayner Productions says, Hey, Steve, just sent in a super chat a while ago. Apologies, mate. I must have missed it. They're, they're not showing up yet. Someone else said that as well. Um, became a paddock owner. Congratulations. Excited to be part of the club all the way from Northeast USA. Brilliant. What's my honest opinion on Harry Maguire? I, I saw the edited video of him doing the rounds yesterday. It's not a great look. He didn't have a good game at all, did he? Um, it's one of those. Um, Andy says, good wing coaches are decent. I will have a look at those. Andy Long. Oh, it's a message for Notch. Forget, ignore me. Uh, Jordan says, stay sitting at home all week with COVID and rumours. Need some good transfer news. <laughs> Soz. And give you some bang average transfer news that Simon Stone's actually let some out of the bag. But outside of that, I don't think there's fucking much else worth writing about. It's a weird, frustrating time at the minute. There's not a lot fucking going on. It's just one of them, innit? Um, Akshay says, seems LVG doesn't want Timber to move before the World Cup. So he's saying he can't move... Um, like this month it's a strange one um anthony says maguire was well out of his depth against germany yep big mitch says probably die if we don't get even nervous or basuma a little bit dramatic mate relax uh why aren't we going in for them the problem with premier league players and this is why tealman's makes so much sense because of his contract situation 
Um, yeah, that's going to a Premier League team is you're getting your pants pulled down. And I think that's got to be the only reason because ability wise, yeah. Anthony Jarvis says, what's that on your shoulder in the photo? It looks like an end law. Yes, that's exactly what it is. And no, I didn't fire it. We just posed with it. Um, I tried. Oh, I didn't get to. World Cup in the winter, Steve. Yeah, I know. So that's what I'm saying. Is if he's not going to move before the World Cup, then obviously he's saying he's not going to be moving before January. Um, Rebecca says, why has it gone really quiet that Basuma's on bail for sexual assault? Surely we don't want to have people like that even linked with our club. This is a massive minefield at the moment. Um, everybody's innocent until proven guilty. And I think that that's got to stay the same. I'm not going to comment on someone's perceived guilt, and that's the same with our players linked under the same sort of things. It's not my job to do that, and it's not fair to do that either. So I would just say, yeah, if anyone's found guilty of anything like that, then absolutely not. I wouldn't want them anywhere near the club. Um, in terms of, and I don't like talking about that stuff, I'd rather keep things on a pure football basis. On a pure football basis, yeah. Um, John says, get five players in, I'll be happy with that. Abenav says, is Thielman still available? Um, yeah, it sounds like it, and it looks like... Um, it looks like it's um, it's doing bits, or it was doing bits at least to Arsenal at some point. I don't know if that's just died off because of everything else and all the rest of that sort of stuff. Um, Jason Swartz says, Jesse and Pog believe and all the news out of the club stops. There's a lot of people just left. What if it was Lee Grant? I know it's sexy to sort of throw it at the bigger names, and I've done it myself with Ed Woodward. But we don't know who it was, do we? That's the top and bottom of it. Um, what do I think the impact of Palestri and Cavani on Nunes camp seemingly wanting to avoid Manchester now? That's interesting. Yeah, don't know. Don't know. Um... Anthony says the depth case highlights that people should be judged in court and not in the papers. Yeah. I mean, I saw a lot of stuff about myself this week. There was not one fucking slide of it that was correct or accurate. Like, you can't reply. Like, there's that much. I've seen so... F I mean, I've seen that I died on Twitter. Um, so, you know, it's just one of them, minute You just fucking leave them to it and go, right, fine. And, you know, believe what you want to believe. Um... The, the evidence of everything is right in front of you. If you want to fucking deal with it, deal with it. Um, Abdi says, 